Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to search for text in a long text field in Microsoft Access. Now, I know that you can do it with the built-in find feature in Access, and I'm going to show that for the beginners. But sometimes, advanced users, programmers, us developers, we want to be able to build this kind of functionality ourselves so we can tweak its behavior. So then for the developers, I'm going to show you how to do this with a little VBA. Today's question comes from Heather in O'Fallon, Missouri, one of my platinum members. She says, I'm building a database to store book summaries, which includes fields like the book title, ISBN number, and a long text field for detailed summaries that can span multiple paragraphs. I often need to search for specific keywords within these summaries. While I know I can use the built-in control F function to search, it requires multiple steps, like specifying the current field each time. Since I perform this task many times a day, is there a way to create a custom text box with buttons to streamline the process? Ideally, I'd like to type a keyword into a box and use the custom find first and find next buttons to navigate through the results. Of course. Let me show the beginners how to do this. And then we'll talk about how to program this in VBA for the developers. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. You'll find links down below. For the purposes of this video, we're going to make this notes field bigger. In fact, I am going to get rid of this stuff. And we don't need these buttons for now. We'll get rid of those. And I'm just going to make this nice and big so we can see it plainly and clearly like that. Okay, so we got a nice big text box. I'm gonna save that, close it, open it back up again. There we go, got a nice big text box in here. Now let's say I got several multiple large paragraphs in here, right? Uh, in fact, I'll just copy this one, right? We'll just go copy and then I'll come in here and I'll press enter a couple times and I'll hit paste. So I got the same paragraph twice. All right, so we got text to search for. All right, let's say I'm looking for the word cape, C-A-P-E, okay? Now, if you want to find cape, I can, the first thing you have to do is click on this field to make it easier. Hit Control F, that'll bring up the find and replace. Type in what you're searching for, like cape. Then you got some options. Look in current field or the current document. Current document means it's gonna search all the fields on this form. All right, we want current field. Match, then you got whole field, which means the entire field has to be equal to what you type in there. This is fine for things like last name or maybe an email address, right? But in this particular case, I want to pick any part of the field. The other option is start of the field, which is the first couple characters, right? So we'll go any part of the field. Then you got search, up, down, or all, and that's through the records that you're on. So I'm on record one now. I'll just leave it at all, okay? But by default, it's gonna search multiple records. Now this may or may not be a desirable action, especially if you wanna, you know, if you're working with a specific book and you don't wanna have it search for the same word in different books, okay? And this is one of the things that Heather mentioned to me in her email is that she wants to be able to just search on this one. And if it doesn't find the word, don't move to the next one. Don't move to the next record. Okay. Then you got some options here. Match case, search fields is formatting. This has to do with the formatting of the field, right? If you put like a custom date format on or something, something like that. All right. But we're just going to hit find next. It'll find it there. There you go. All right. Find next again. It finds the next one. And if I do it, find next, it'll jump to, in this case, record 26. I found landscape. Okay, so that's how you do it with the built-in search functionality. And it certainly works, right? It'll, it'll do the job. Now, if you are a beginner and you want to learn more about find and replace, I cover them in detail in my Access Beginner Level 4 class. Right, we cover all kinds of different stuff when it comes to find and replace. We go over all the different options in here and stuff like that. So that's the beginner part. Now let's switch over to the developer part. All right, put our developer hats on. What does that mean? That means if you've never done any VBA programming before and you want to learn, start with this video, Intro to VBA. It's free. It's on my website. Go watch this. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And I got some other ones for you, too. You should know what null values are and how to use the isNull function. You should know how to use the setFocus command to move to a different field, text box, whatever. You should know what the cell start and cell length properties are for finding where the cursor is, setting where the cursor is, and so on. You should know how to use the in string function to find a string within another string. 
This one's almost a given in pretty much any VBA program. If then, you should know how to use this. And finally, Adam's favorite, you should know what temp bars are and how to use temp bars. These are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with any of those, go watch the video and come back, all right? Okay. Okay, so what Heather wants is a custom text box and a find first, find next button just to search in here, not necessarily to jump to other records, although I will cover that in the extended cut for the members because you might want to be able to do that. We'll make it an option. So let's come down here in design view and I'm gonna put down here a text box. We'll just copy one of these, copy paste. All right, we'll put this down here. We'll call this find, that's our label. We'll put that over here. Come on, come on, there we go. This guy, this will be our search text. So open up its properties. Let's give it a good name. We'll call this uh, find in text. And make sure to get rid of the control source because right now it's bound to the country field, which means it's gonna be saving anything you put in here in the country field in the table. So get rid of that so it's unbound. All right, now we need a couple buttons. Let's start off with a find first button. So grab a command button, drop it down here, cancel the wizard. We're gonna put in here find first. I will call this my find first button, BTN. And now we're ready for some code. Right click, build event. That'll bring up your code builder. Let me just move this over here. We don't need that open. Let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, we're right down here. In fact, I got rid of these other two buttons. We can just get rid of that code. Make things easier to read. All right, here's our find first button code. This is the code that runs when you click on the button. All right, first thing we're gonna do is check to make sure there's something in both the notes field and our find in text field. If either one of those things is blank, we just exit out. So if is null notes or is null find in text, then exit sub. You could give them a message box, whatever you want there, that's fine. Okay, all right. Next thing is I'm gonna use the in string function to locate the find in text inside the notes. And I'll save that in a variable. So we'll dim, let's call it POS for position as long. Okay, and I'm gonna say POS equals in string notes is the field I'm looking in, comma, find in text is the field that I'm searching for, okay? And some of you have asked me this before, if you look really carefully at the parameters in here, notice it says start string one, string two. This is interesting that we're gonna come back to this in a few minutes, okay? Now, what does in string return? Well, in string will return a zero if that is not found. Otherwise, it returns the position inside the string where it finds it. So, if the position is greater than zero, then text was found. Okay, what are we gonna do? Well, let's go to the notes field. We gotta set focus there and then select the text. You can't select the text if the focus is not on the field already. So it's gonna be notes.setFocus to go there. Notes.cellStart equals position, but it's gonna be position minus one. All right, we wanna go before that character, okay? Remember, cell start is zero based. If you put the cursor at position zero, it's before the first character, okay? Now, notes.cellLength equals, we found the exact text, so we know how long it's gonna be, right? It's gonna be the length of the text we're trying to find. So, the length of find in text. Yeah, I didn't put the length function in the prerequisites. So if you wanna learn more about that, go search it on my website. I'll put a link down below. It's covered in this video, a bunch of other stuff. Left, right, mid, length, and string. Okay, okay. All right, so there we go. We've highlighted the first one. Now, if it's not greater than zero, that means it's gonna be zero. Else, right, the text was not found. We're gonna say a message box. And then we're gonna say whatever the text was, not found. So we'll say find in text and was not found. And if, and it might make this easier to read in the message box if we put that inside of quotes, right? So it says, you know, quote, cape, 
unquote, was not found. But remember, to put quotes inside of quotes, we have to use double, double quotes. So this is double quote, double quote, double quote, double quote, <laughs> and, and then another set of double quotes here. That's confusing for a lot of people, right? So this becomes a double quote inside of this string. And this becomes another double quote inside of this string. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. I talk more about it in my concatenation video if you want to learn more. All right. So we're done with find first pretty much for now. Let's debug compile once in a while. Good to do. All right. Let's close. Oh, someone's beaming in. Let's close this down, save changes, open it back up again, and I'm going to type in here. Well, first of all, let's test it with nothing. All right, just exits out, right? That was our exit. You can put a message in there if you want. I'm going to type in cape and then press find first. And look at that. It found it, and then it went to that location. Set focus, put cell start here, cell length is four. What if I put in cape XXX? Not found, and I put it inside of quotes for us. Look at that. Isn't that cute? What if I type in Richard? Oh, right at the beginning there, right? What if I look for access? Right there, perfect. Now, that's find first. What about find next? What if I want to find the next one, which will be down here in this next duplicated paragraph? Well, we will cover that in tomorrow's video. Actually, today, the day this is going public, is Friday the 27th of December, 2024, so we'll cover this on Monday. December 30th, or if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording it right now. And that's one of the benefits of being a member is you can watch all the videos as soon as they're posted. So subscribe now, but that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something live long and prosper. My friends, I'll see you on Monday for part two, a special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with access experts, software solutions, Manufacturing experts specializing in access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. 
free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course so i do now have a quicker microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no i didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but i'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course level two is also free for paid members of any level including supporters so if you're a member go watch level two it's free okay want to get your question answered in a video just like this one visit my tech help page and send me your question there members get priority of course while i do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.